Hi, I'm Dr. M. Kamakshaya. Uh, I'm an open source software evangelist and um, enterprise solution architect, uh, academic of data science and analytics. For the past few videos, I've been explaining how to do data analysis using PSPP. Uh, PSPP is an open source community-based um, community-based GUI software application or GUI-based software application. Uh, it is a clone of SPSS and it supports a decent set of uh, statistical analysis. Um, in SPSS, we'll be having too many things which we don't use for many, for many times. Um, PSPP is sufficient for student dissertations, um, research scholars, theses, and um, teaching as a teaching aid for um, instruction related to statistical analysis or computation statistics, whatever it is. Uh, in my last video, I have explained how to do the cost evaluation. In this video, I am going to talk about how to calculate um, descriptive statistics. So this is one of the, uh, in business analytics or in data analytics, there are three types of uh, analysis, descriptive analysis, predictive analytics, and um, prescriptive analytics. Usually we talk it as summary statistics, inferential statistics, and exploratory statistics in statistics. But in analytics, we talk like uh, descriptive analysis, predictive analysis, or analytics and uh, prescriptive analysis. So in this video, the, the goal of this video is to explain you how to make the descriptive analysis of few data variables. Mm, I already have... Mm, a data set in my computer which I have saved on my desktop as a SAV file. So this is actually, um, so by the way, the beauty of PSPP is that when you save your, I have used a certain data set in my previous video, like performed a cross tabulation and also a contingency analysis, bivariate chi-square independency test. And after that analysis, I have saved it in my computer as a .sav file, which is actually SPSS uh, format file. It is SPSS data format, .sav. So PSPP by default saves that in SPSS uh, formats, so that we can just, you know, if you observe, this file is identified by the SPSS, not by the PSPP. So now what we do is, I am going to show you how to import the Assuming that this is actually the output of the SPSS. Uh, file, mm, open. So I think we don't need to import this time. I think it is on desktop. See, this is a SAV file. And, um, okay. So now I get the data. So it's all, all the formatting, I mean, uh, the recording transformations, all of them are available for my further analysis. In my previous video, I have created a new variable salary new and then I recorded it. I converted the salary variable into the categorical variable. Uh, you can just go back and see that video how I've done and also explained you how to handle missing data. And I did a cross tabulation for gender versus salary. Assuming that salary, salary is salary new, which is categorical version of the salary. Something like that. So let me go to the data view and I will show you quickly. So this is my gender and if I press on this icon, uh, you will see my categorical salary new as categorical variable which is converted from salary. If you press one second there, I have the numbers. If you press on, on this icon again, you will see the categories. Something like that. But for categorical variables, I mean, which are string-based, character-based variables, you don't see that transformation. I also recorded gender, but that is not... So only for numeric variables, we'll see that. Okay, so stopping all this nonsense. So I'm just uh, going ahead uh, with analysis. And the as I have said, uh, the aim of this uh, video demonstration is to show you how to make descriptive. So for that, we need to go to this Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics and Descriptives. So earlier I have uh, shown you how to do the frequency tables and cross tabulation in this. I am going to talk about uh, descriptives. So for what 
variables we are going to perform the descriptive analysis. Now I'll take um, you know salary, age, salary particulars, and also you know the rest of them are not uh, available for say the gender, education, family, which are actually nominal variables. They are not available for the descriptive analysis. So theoretically, descriptive analysis or summary statistics are computed. Uh, only for numeric variables. So for character based on strings, string type data, we have to go for the frequency tables, not the descriptive statistics. So that is actually the theory. So here there are a couple of options for you. Actually, they are not applicable to my data because I already handled missing data. So here exclude entire case if any selected uh, variable is missing. This is actually a beautiful opportunity to handle the missing data, but I already handled it. So I don't need to worry about the missing data here in this uh, scenario, okay? So here I just want to expand this. And anyway, this is not going ahead. Fine, no problem. So what do I need for uh, descriptive statistics? I want mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, range. Um, I want um, cutters, skewness. I think I already selected the standard deviation, right? Yes. Mm, that's it. So what else I need? I don't need anything else. So, okay, when uh, you press OK, now your output table is going to show you the descriptive analysis. Now, what is my sample size? It is 30. Salary, all of them are 30, 30, 30. Each variable, so sam same number of sample respondents. Mean value for salary is 63. That is actually the average salary in the data set. It is 63,000, so assuming that it is measured in thousands. Now the age, um, the average age of the individuals is 61 years, so that's very bad. Okay, um, salary particulars, which is actually categorical data. So I converted the salary numeric data into the categorical data. Now the average response, average value for this categorical data, actually have two categories, one and two. Obviously it should be 1.5, there's nothing so now standard deviation is very vicious. See for 63 uh, mean 23.63 is huge. So the value is so huge. So usually the ideal value for the mean should be for normal distribution should be zero, and for standard deviation should be one. So comparatively the values are pretty high. Uh, seems to be statistically. The difference seems to be statistically significant, but I can say it's a very premature statement. We have to perform some tests in order to conclude the, whether the differences are statistically significant. Now coming to the caduceus, you see these are all minus values. So which means the data, all these data vari variables are platy cutty. Now cut, um, standard error of the caduceus is this very good actually. In other tools, we don't get them automatically. We have to use the formulas in order to calculate the standard error for cutters and standard error for skewness. Now even for skewness, you see it is minus. Minus means left skewed, but that is not so bad because the value is the magnitude of the skewness is 0 0.05. That is, I don't think it is um, such a big value for skewness, but it is negative, which shows that it is neg uh, left skewed. Okay, the values are very high. So, once again, going back to the mean, if you, see, if you look at the mean 63.03, Having a skewness of negative, negative skewness is no more a surprise. We don't need to be surprised of the negative value for skewness. Having a mean of 63.03. And now here you have standard error of the skewness, that's a good thing. And these standard errors um, are very much useful while we are testing normality, that I'll speak later, when that concept arises into this for discussion. Now range is 73, that's also very bad uh, for salary and 73 for age, because I simulated this data set, don't worry. They're all artificial <laughs> numbers, uh, assuming a particular context. So minimum 26 um, for salary, 24 for age and minimum value for um, the category which belongs to the minimum is 0 to 50. Huh? And maximum 99, 97 each salary and age respectively and the maximum category is maximum number of uh, response, sample respondents belongs to the category 5200. So this is actually 
the output for, for descriptive analysis. Now I'm going to talk about a new concept uh, related to PSPP. So many of you might be worried. Uh, okay, we are performing uh, analysis, but how to export this? So for that, you need a particular tool called LibreOffice because this is open source software and uh, this communicates well with another open source software. Mm, the advantage of the liver, uh, I've installed LibreOffice here. If you see you know, LibreOffice, you'll see that LibreOffice writer here. So PSPP supports two formats. One is PDF, the other one is um, LibreOffice writer, which is a potential alternative for MS Office Word. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to export this into an editable file. So you have, you can convert that into a PDF file which is non-editable and you can also convert into a LibreOffice Writer uh, format which is editable, okay. So if you go to the edit, not edit, see here file, you have something called export. Now, so I'm exporting the output, okay. So here down in the window, I'm going to resize my window so that I shall be able to see the format. See here, infer file type extension, something like that. See, it automatically infers, doesn't matter, don't care. So you can also convert that into HTML. That's good, it's very good actually, because I'm a web developer and full stack uh, software developer. Uh, HTML files are more preferable to me. Uh, so you see, there are wide variety of, uh, you know, the file formats. There is SPV, which is SPSS viewer format. There is PDF, HTML, ODT. This is open document. I'm talking about, you know, LibreOffice. Earlier it was open office. Now it is LibreOffice. The file format for uh, LibreOffice is ODT, dot .ODT. Just like, you know, for MS Windows, we have MS Word, we have DOCX, DOC, something like that. You can also convert it into text. You can also, I prefer text. PS Postscript, which is uh, cousin of uh, PDF, CSV, PNG, SVG. It's a scalable vector graphics. That's uh, a highly influential file format, uh, which is beyond the description of uh, today's uh, concept. So I'm going to show you how to uh, quickly convert that into open office, uh, which is ODT. Now I'll select ODT. And then here I'll give a, desk, a name for my file, descriptive status takes that's it you don't need to do anything now it is going to the desktop but i want to send it somewhere into a d folder mm, i've been saving all these things in a particular location called data save now go back to your folder okay uh, in your files if you go back to the folder I think I am on desktop I think I should change to D miscellaneous and data see I got ODT and it is also identified with Microsoft Word not with ODT in my computer ODT is file associated with this is file association so microsoft uh, identified this as an editable file so you can just open you now your microsoft word will open instead of uh, you know libreoffice if you i'm a fan of libreoffice please that is different i'm a fan of many things being an open source software evangelist now you can just edit this and start writing uh, you know interpretation to this table you can also format this table into a nice looking uh, margins with an uh, add nice looking margins to your table now what I do is instead of me writing struggling with this uh, table I'll just go to chart GPT um, and use chart GPT as an assistant by the way I know how to interpret my day and uh, outputs so I'm not worried about uh, so I'm just going to no I think something wrong with my computer I don't think it should come like this. Should be able to go. I don't need to log in. I don't know why it is going into. 
Okay, fine, log in. Don't know. Oh my god. So do I need to do all these things? That's bad. Oh, it's taking a lot of time. Okay, fine, finally I landed into it. Now, I just take health from ChargeGPT, assuming that ChargeGPT is going to help me. Yeah, good, it's going on. So this is a beautiful interpretation to my table. So I, if I have to write this interpretation, by the way, you should know each and every value in your analysis. Okay, so I know my table, each and every value and its significance in my analysis. That is why I'm just taking help from the charge GPT. But if you don't know, ensure that you will know it first and then use charge GPT. Now you can just, wonderful analysis. So this is how we perform descriptive analysis in PSPB and then export those results into an editable file such as OpenOffice, LibreOffice, MS Office, and many other offices. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for the new content. Bye bye for now.